Yeah. Um, and of course, people raise the question, how safe is it? Is, you know, mm -hmm. is it pig brain extract? And mm -hmm. how would you answer that? I would say very safe, um, very safe. The cerebral lysin, uh, especially if we're getting it from a good source, which is important, um, the cerebral lysin is approved in now over 70 countries. Um, mm -hmm. The United States is unfortunately not one of them, um, but it is. Uh, it has been approved by multiple countries for, for things like stroke or traumatic brain injury. Um, and, and so I am certainly a big fan of the cerebral lysin. I think it is very, very safe. Um, uh, one of the things I should mention is one of the big fears about brain related products or extracts is, or things like prions or mad cow disease type of things. And, and something that is interesting is that pigs are actually naturally prion resistant. Um, mm -hmm. they almost never get prions. And so you don't have to worry about anything like that. And most everything else is thoroughly tested for, um, in these pharmaceutical batch ingredients. And so, so I think true life is, is, is very, very safe. Wonderful. And mm -hmm. if you're treating somebody with you know, stroke, either acute or, or chronic a long time ago, um, what would be the dosing? Would you recommend daily dose for, you know, I, I've seen protocol of like 16 weeks. Um, yeah. What do you think is the ideal way of using that? Yeah. So most of the clinical trials, which have been done using the cerebral ISM, do it as an IV infusion. And those IV infusions can get to very, very high doses, um, you know, upwards of 50 milliliters uh, infused on a daily basis for every day for multiple days. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so you can take very aggressive approaches, but I also think that it sort of shows you that there's, you really can't overdo it. Um, a lot of these, uh, you're, you're not going to overdose on these products. And so um, I think that it also, as I should say, in the research setting, really only been used or studied really acutely, usually within the first three to six months after some type of event. Um, and so a lot of what we might be able to do chronically and at what doses is still a little bit of a guess, but I think that what we've seen, at least anecdotally, is that you know one milliliter of the, uh, of the solution, which is usually at 215 milligrams per ml, is is consistently used and, and has gotten some really great effects. Um, but again, hasn't been widely studied as much as those big IV infusions. Mm -hmm. Okay. And something like daily injection of that one, one milliliter for 16 weeks, that sounds pretty reasonable. Correct. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. As I mentioned, you're not going to overdose it. And I think that that I've seen that doses work for quite a few people. Mm -hmm. And what kind of conditions have you seen, you know, people have that have gotten help for, from this? Yeah, so definitely uh, post-stroke. Um, uh, it's been one, probably one of the, the most frequent applications. Um, but even post-TBI, um, any traumatic brain injury of any type, um, but even things like peripheral neuropathy, um, have, I've seen have some some really great effects. Um, and, and so I would say those are certainly the three most common, but I mean, I've seen it used in Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. Um, there's some good studies on maybe some of the APOE4 biology, which it might have um, some beneficial effects on. So I think it has a lot of really positive effects across the um, neurological spectrum and then can really help with a lot of different things. But uh, mostly, uh, I would say uh, definitely in stroke or TBI. Mm, what about ALS or MS? Yeah, so I, I certainly uh, know a lot of people that are using it in those conditions. I myself don't have, I would say, a ton of experience there, but I've heard uh, certainly great things. 